to those that you know and love. God gives us all one chance called life to get it right. Call on his name, follow his word, and to love and run the race that he set before us. So let's see what the Bible says about who's truly saved and who isn't or who can turn from their faith. Jesus said, abide in me. If you stay in me, you'll bear fruit. If you don't stay in me, if you don't remain in me, there will be no fruit. Your branch will wither and be thrown out to be burned. That's in John 15. Okay, if you don't stay in me, if you don't remain in me, you're going to lose your salvation. So let's see. Oh, no mention of stay. What's he talking about? Remain. Let's see. There's remain. Uh, These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. No, that's not it. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. So what he's saying is that you choose Christ. You choose him. And then if you choose not to be in Christ, if you take away your choice or change your choice or whatever, then you lose your salvation. But Jesus says, ye have not chosen me. I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. So this guy's saying the opposite. That's kind of weird. Jesus is saying, you don't have eternal life. You have life in me. <laughs> oh, wow. You don't have eternal life. Is that what Jesus says, John 3, 15? That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In John 6, so whoso eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life right now, and I will raise him up at the last day. This guy said the complete opposite. If you go on believing in me, you'll go on having eternal life, but branches don't have life in themselves as we are all branches. He is the true vine, so I'm not the true vine. I can have life drawn from the vine while I I remain in contact with him. So lose contact with him, and I've been cut off from the source of eternal life. Oh, but doesn't John 3.16 say the opposite? No, it doesn't. For 41 years, I believed it did. 41 years. John 3.16. How old is he, 42? For 41 years, I believed it did. John 3.16, correctly translated, oh, says that whoever goes on... Correctly translated. That's like uh, Genesis 3, uh, when the serpent, uh, when Eve says to the serpent, uh, that God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, correctly translated, ye shall not surely die. On believing in him will never perish but we'll go on having eternal life. That's how we should translate the present continuous tense in the the Greek. It's very important. In the Greek. The Greek is a language. What are you talking about? Greek is not a Bible. It's a language. Hebrew and Greek are languages. They're not Bibles. And what that tells me when people start throwing out the words Greek and Hebrew, that they don't believe in any Bible at all. Even John 3.16 is telling us you have life in Christ. You are not divine. He is. And you remain in contact with him, you go on having eternal life. A very important point. Yeah, very important. That's enough of this clown. Okay, so um, clearly you have eternal life right now. If if you could lose your eternal life, it would not be eternal. It would be temporary. You have temporary life until you choose to give it away. It was never your choice to take it, all right? And like it says in, uh, you know, John 15, or what what was that? Where am I at? John 15, I'm sorry. And verse 15, or verse 16, excuse me. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. So we're not choosing to be saved. Jesus has chosen us to save us. Uh, so it's real simple. Come on. All right. And then also I'd like to point out that 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You're a new creature in Christ. You are a new creature. Now, how do you go from being a new creature to no longer being a new creature, to going back to your old creature, and old things that were passed away are now brought back again, and that you're no longer new, and so now you have to redo the whole process of becoming a new creature. It's ridiculous, all right? For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. All right, clearly uh, that gentleman does not understand the Bible at all. He was probably, it sounds to me like he was preached the true gospel his entire life, and then his, his entire life he's rejected it. Now he's got a microphone, and he's going to proclaim in front of God and everybody that he rejects the grace of God. Okay, in Ephesians 1, verse 13, In whom ye also trusted that after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, Ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. This case closed, fellas. You're sealed. I'm sorry if you think you're stuck. You're stuck in this everlasting life, eternal life. You're stuck and you can't get out of it. That's just the way, just the way it is, man. You're stuck. Once you're saved, you're always saved. And I'm sorry if you don't like it. Well, not really. 